and definitely uh, the riders being able to get the uh, the choice of side, considering it's Empoid's map pit. Don't mind that. Don't mind that call to start two. Ooh, the Julies for Thomas. That could be interesting. I've seen a bit more of the Julies out of recent uh, times, and I think uh, Empoid <laughs> yeah. have been one of the teams that kind of driven that forward. So let's see whether Thomas can do something with these uh, Berettas. We've got Robin buying the utility as well. Quite a lot of utility actually out for Empoid, but he's got the Diffuse Kit as well for the CT forces. Bobby Star Riders, the PT-50 for East Tour being brought down, not passed off to a raid boss who's there with extra utility. Steel was also utility on his part. And Mobby Star play it early into passive ramp. Not much aggression coming in from the T's. Yeah, Mighty Max, we just saw him doing a bit of jiggle peeking just to see if he could get any kind of uh, reaction to come out from the riders. But, I mean, all in all, it's really passive. There's no map control being established. Mobby Star riders, they're just kind of camped out outside of the ramp position. Two players are here for the endpoint side. And both Thomas and Crucial. One thing that I'm certainly going to be keeping my eyes on is how much damage these HEs are going to be able to do because there's three across the board for the CTs. See where they can place them and how to try and deny them. Obviously, our rider's side taps up from the Glocks. We'll try and force one back out of Alley. Mopoz making his way up first alongside Alex right behind him. Seeing that first player out in the open and swatting the second top of the white boost. Crucial also going to go falling and that is a stomper of a start. A nice nade to respond from Robin but damage being done to Alex and Steel. Not much else. No kills going the way of the CT side. They still got the defuse kit. Cyril's got the Kevlar as well but all in all it's not much to work with in the 2 versus 5. CT is going to just try their best to see if they can win out some of these gunfights. But so far, things are looking excellent. Alex, in the end, being able to find four kills. And a player we mentioned in the pregame, hoping to step up with some uh, great recent performances from him. But all that pistol round comes down to is just some opening duels. Uh, we saw the riders, they established the ramp control. We see Endpoint is starting to back off and play a little bit more passive over at the A bomb site. But the Glocks, they came out on top. And look at the amount of Mac 10s being upgraded. Yeah, SMGs galore, I feel like, for the Mobby Star side, you know, with the uh, MP7 as well from Steel, the AK for Alex as an insurance policy. And of course, the Deagle Force Buy is going to be out for the CT forces as standard. The damage being sustained at this moment here between Surreal and the Utility. Very careful about this whole stance at the moment. The CT side obviously have lost that early control, and Mobby Star are taking map control, just slowly but surely pushing up, using utility to flush out positions, and certainly expecting Endpoint to try something cheeky based off the fact that Steel's ready for a boost. I'll tell you what, so far we've uh, actually seen the riders being able to push the CTs quite deep into the bomb sites rather than any kind of aggression coming out. Now, it looks as if they want to try and pull off an A stack, and by the looks of things, this is the perfect read from Endpoint, because the Riders, they're going to be going straight into this stack, Jay. The bomb's there, the smoke's up to commit to it, flashbang's also coming over, no response from the CT side. Mounting off the scaffolding, surreal boosted up, Deagle standing by. Bomb plant not going to get secured just yet. He does catch off Mopoz in the end of the midst of the smoke, expecting that bomb plant to come in. And he knows now what's going on. Steel's going to go for a much safer plant. Keep his head down, evading the headshots from the boost position. It's a five versus four post plant position for the Movistar Riders side, but it is a favor to endpoint here. So Reels found that kill. He's found the damage as well in response, and the CT will storm in. Nice flashbang over smoke's coming up. Steel's going to still line up two good kills with the Surreal and Robin Crucial turns back, but East Tour there with a double onto him and Thomas. And Mighty Max left alone to get picked apart by Alex and Bobby Star with a 2 0 start. And what's really big in that last round is the fact that four out of the five kills that go the way of the Riders are down to the SMGs. Two with the MAC 10 and two with that MP7, which are really going to start to farm up the bank of the Riders' side. Endpoint not being too successful in the eco. And what we did see as well from Lowell, who unfortunately didn't have too much impact in that last round, having a late lurk out through mid as well. So we uh, are currently seeing riders at least uh, performing at a pretty good level in the early stages i mean it is only the first three rounds that we've at least sighted so far and the gamble stack over at a is a bit of a gamble because the bomb's making its way over to bj yeah trying the same thing twice in that case obviously had this stack in for the last execution and then they did all right with it this time around though of course you know going towards a as Movistar riders decide to lean towards b you know it's a 50 50 coin toss depending on you know how well you think you know the enemy in this case, apparently not that well in this scenario for Endpoint. 
And they will lose the opening kill. Of course, they should lose the round as well for a 3 0 start. Seeing the first two kills coming in for the T side. And crucial Thomas and Mighty Max backed up here towards the A site. Hoping they might catch some players being a bit overly aggressive again, do some damage if they can. But the Mac 10s are what's hunting them down for money more than anything else. In the end, they will clean up, get some money on their banks. Mopoz and Lowell with their respective frags. They should be able to upgrade to the weapons. They've got plenty of money for the T side. And then point with their own orb setup will buy down for the first rifle round. And they've got the opportunity of dropping an AWP down to Estor, but they're opting against it. They're just going to go for the rifle setup, still holding on to that MAC-10 as well. No need to upgrade that. Still a lot of money in the bank, so a bit of a bonus round coming out for the Riders. But the AWP is up for crucial, and the aggression coming out for Beast is so much more aggressive than what we've seen before from Endpoint. And they gain the map control, and they gain the man advantage from Thomas. First kill coming in against Steel. Spraying close towards some of the positions that the T's are holding in at, but in the end they respond with damage. Do catch off Mopoz over on the B-bomb site. Picking out of the smoke and the 5-on-3 situation ensues for Endpoint. Much more confident in these early rounds trying to hold off against the Movistar side. Encountering aggression with solid defensive and uh, we'll get away with a lot of damage to Mighty Max again. 1 HP for him. We'll get past that AWP so we can hold that passive and... Uh, Hope we're not going to see one of those rifles for the moment. Meanwhile, they're ready for boosts. Look at this position from Robin. Knowing exactly where to aim, how to shut him down. Nade onto East Hall for even more damage. And Endpoint are playing this round to a T. And that's one of these cheeky angles that was uh, never used, I suppose, uh, before the new update. Great little angle trying to catch the boosted player going up through mid. And Movistar Riders, I mean, even in a three on five, haven't really had the opportunity to bring it back, especially with Robin being able to find the opener. Estor and Alex. And at this point, they're, I mean, look, they'll buy in the next round. So it's not a big negative that they've been completely shut out like this. But the one thing they're certainly going to be worried about is if they keep five players alive from Endpoint, the economy's just going to build massively for them. 20 seconds, and Movistar will try to go for a last-second gamble hit in towards the A-bomb site. They've got plenty of defensive here, though. And even more on the way in the form of Robin. They're going to screw up bomb plant out of this. This would be pretty good if they could get away with it. Yeah, they do. Nice. And now a five on two as Endpoint are forced back into hitting the A-bomb site and, and retaking once again. This didn't go too well for them when they had the uh, five on four advantage, but this time only two players on the Movistar side. And the uh, smoke's down, the incendiary's back. Matt's going to keep his eyes on C, that bomb, try and tap it once. Robin's going to get behind cover, hard cover. Here comes Angela Peek up, does get taken out in the end, and he's tall. He's dealt with by Surreal. So two for two trade. Leaves them pointing the three players alive. The defuse comes through, and it will be a first on the board for the CT site. And I'll tell you what, um, maybe some of the viewers in the chat are kind of like, well, why didn't they rush the plan and, and not allow Movistar Riders to get the bomb down? And the reason for that is, is already we're seeing the economy pretty much built up. What Endpoint needs to be doing is not wasting any lives. So they set themselves up in a retake on a 5 on 2. A lot of the time on Vertigo, you will see a lot of retakes to that A bomb site. It's so difficult to deny the T's any kind of uh, aggression or even the execution. It's just so much easier to retake. And endpoint. Back into the fifth round, it's going to be a buy up for both sides. Great utility from the HE from Mighty Max to do some early damage. And Sinira didn't go, quite go as well as they would have wanted it to, but they'll get the info that the smoke is up, so they have uh, scaffolds control. The Molotov's down behind the sandbags for the moment. We'll try and uh, flush out positions as standard against the endpoint lineup, but they're pretty passive on this bomb site, and they've gone for not quite a gamble stack per se, but you know, four players up here, leaving only Surreal in an aggressive stance to defend against it, and this might work out well for them, because again, Movistar are leaning towards this A site, a hit comes in, the shot out from Crucial opens things up, the flashbang might force him off angle, and Movistar still not committing to the actual execution just yet. Great utility coming out. CTs, Mighty Max is going to push through the flashbang. That's the bomb dropped as well. That's so much information. And look at that. They've already brought the mid player out for the CT over to A. Four players here from Endpoint. And another flashbang is going to come through. Mighty Max is having such a day at the moment because he could just keep peeking with those flashbangs. Yeah, Lowell and East Tour. Last two players from Mobby Star. And again, the. Uh, clinical sort of accuracy from Endpoint to pick apart Movistar Riders piece by piece, not with explosive defensives or you know, d denials of you know, a certain sort of confident kind. No, it's just shot after shot, peak after peak, 
pop flash in, a good peek in the AWP of Crucial, lining up those picks towards Ali. Three kills for him, and a second on the board for Team Endpoint. And the buy up here available for most our riders. I imagine we should see a response. No, actually, no. There's two players that are pretty low, so a half buy might be a bit more appropriate. And that's what we're going to opt against. And really, we probably should see Endpoint start to tie us up at three apiece. Especially with the fact that, uh, well, last round they kept four players alive, and the round before that, three players in the gun round. So, for so far, the gun rounds have been very successful, but it's the fast pressure up to the A bomb site, and again, it's the utility that's doing the damage. But even still, the pressure's still here for the T's. Much faster from the T side Ooh. forces, and they're still going to get shut down for it. Not quite connecting from Crucial. Thomas gets that kid on lower, but Crucial's ready for the last man. They know exactly where he is, and they will shut it down. But notice how, like you know, pressured Endpoint felt when the when the when the uh, yeah. when the hit was actually really quick from Movistar Riders. You know, they kind of uh, they were thrown off a little bit, especially in that alley defensive where eventually the, the player got traded. That's actually a possibly a viable strategy for Mobby Star Riders. Don't play the default. Just don't go and don't go for rushes either. But you know, go for very fast hits into these uh, bomb sites. Yeah, I tell you what, uh, Jay makes a really good point. Maybe taking fast ram control could be the the answer to success at the moment because what we've seen from Endpoint again, it's they're taking this B stairs control and they're taking ram control. So on a map like Vertigo on a CT side, if you're taking control over towards either B or either A, it gives you such an advantage to lock out the T side and even just a slight gap on the edge of that smoke and Robin, he gets a man advantage once again. Endpoint, they look so structured at the moment on this map. Now, they're still going to be predicting where most star riders are going to be at as well, because, you know, like, and that's part of the reason why I think uh, they're, they're so good on this map is the fact that they know roughly how, how how to funnel teams into their, you know, advantageous positions or otherwise read how to gain the advantage of a certain situation. And, and right now, it feels like that they are just, um, just exploiting that to their greatest advantage, you know, two picks going the way back and forth. It was Robin that started things off, and Alex... Training it back in the end. Look how fast the reels pushed up, though. He's going to deny any sort of B presence from the main entrance. They have to go through mid if they want to go there, but again, they're going to lean towards A. At end point, they're just so set up for this. Yeah, they certainly are, and there's a lot of utility to work with for Crucial. Four sets of util. Molly going to go down to the default position, and that's going to even deny the bomb plant from going down, Jay. And for the moment, at least, once that Molotov extinguishes, Molly Star Riders do have access to the site. Max is going to play very careful around this, and Nade up to do damage to Steel. Follow up Nade as well, and there it is. Crucial, and Robin combined to take out Steel. Alex does trade out Robin, but Max pops his head up and takes the quick trade back, leaving Lowell alone on the sandbag. A smoke up will try and block off his vision. They don't know where he is, though. He's played very passive on this one, very quiet and careful, going for his face up. Oh, Crucial! What a spot and a scope and a shot as easy as that. A fourth on the board for endpoints and uh, tell you what crucials had a uh, a pretty uh, pretty weird career to say the least i mean he's always been playing on these international lineups we saw him get picked up from splice which was one of the most crazy lineups i think anyone has ever seen but i mean he, he's been a player that's been a part of the uk scene for a very long time jay yeah i remember playing seeing yeah you know, obviously seeing him back in his uh, uh first ever sort of um UK teams back in 2016, you know, like, uh, I mean, for, for me personally, it was like his first sort of teams. I think it's been part of the UK scene for even longer than I actually now thinking about it's, it. It's been a while, yeah. You know, just to say that that's my earliest memory of seeing Crucial, and that's like four years ago. Hmm. And it's like, you know, here he is right now on this squad with Endpoint. And he was always touted as being one of those guys that you would expect to do something in, in the context of the UK scene. Um, but I don't yeah. think anyone had him ha had him down to have any, uh, uh, you know, international success. And well, you see this endpoint side, the most internationally successful UK CSGO roster. And right now he's got 10 frags against Movistar Riders in just seven rounds. Moving into round eight, it's back down to a force buy on the Movistar side. And you can see Crucial, sorry to take this 11th kill. Oh, what a flick. So well around right the shoulder bait. And Alex is going to pay for it alongside more aggression that may even catch off the bomb planter here. Oh, bomb drop. So much info at the moment from endpoint. This could be five rounds in a row from them. Estor trying to bring it back. Double peaks coming out for both Surreal and Robin. It's a little bit difficult to peek together considering they're at different angles and different levels of height. But five on three. Marty Max, the in-game leader over at the A bomb site, doing his own and holding the A bomb site all alone by himself. And now they've brought three players over around the stairs area for the CTs. Yeah, they, they know the bombs there. You know, it's just dropped in that little spit in the smoke where you can just about see it. Ooh. It's in the area. It's not quite landing where they wanted it to. A bit too uh, shallow in the midst of the smoke. Not going past it in this case. East towards the face. 
So look at how close he is. They're going to get spotted eventually, and Surreal will drop that bomb for a second time. So they won't be able to get the device, and they won't be able to get this round either. Endpoint, another solid, solid round from them. All five alive as well. And as you say, that's five on the trot for Endpoint. Movistar Riders going to have to rethink the strategy board here. May have to go for another half buy. They are a max loss bonus, so there's that. But uh, not enough to go for the full lone rifles here. And honestly, what I'm seeing at the moment from Endpoint, I'm, I'm not surprised if, if they pick up 11 rounds, 10, 11 rounds on CT at the moment. They have four AKs and AWP, and Crucial's at 35,000, I should say $13,000. Like, that's ridiculous how much money they've got. That would have been a little bit too much money. <laughs> I mean, he was on $13,500, so I, I can forgive you for that much. His two picks though puts him up high. They do drop Crucial in the end, so that's one weapon drop, but in the end, Movistar do just get decimated as you would expect those pistols v rifles. So it's a pretty standard round, I feel like, here. The bias coming in though. Should see the AKs up against them. Two AKs recovered for Endpoint though, and they've kept those in play for the last couple of rounds. The Mobby Riders, or the Mobby Star Riders, I should say. Careful. What's going on at the moment, Jay? What's going on? Careful. <laughs> Go on careful. Mo Mobby Star Riders fans will crucify Ooh. you. Oh, Malix might just crucify the CT side. Indeed, wow, he does. Nice. Run boost round on towards the stairs. Surreal had no idea it was coming. Robin thought he was backed up, but he wasn't. A rush out from the Mobby Star side. And again, that speed is what gives him the advantage. Bomb plant 5v3. Endpoint may be out the round already. What a change up coming out from the Spanish court. Crucial. He's going to be able to find one, but I tell you what, they, they've set themselves up like they're going for this, even with the disadvantage, still finding two kills. That is so big from him, and making a third as well. The lurk of steel was fantastic. But one thing, you look at the defaults that are being set from Endpoint, they're playing a 3-1-1. They're only really playing, sometimes they're playing two over at the B-bomb side, but for the majority of rounds, they're playing one member, and for the riders, they go, you know what? We've lost six rounds in a row, we need to change it up, and it's the fast aggression it's the run boost and the swing for b stairs they catch down the two b anchors they open up the site completely and then still lurks over as well what a huge round for the riders and look at this they're gonna go quick once again out the gates here it's gonna be easter with the opening kill my match at the opener he somehow gets two but runs out of ammo with a third he's torn out entering into the bomb site the Molotovs go down to try and stop the progression of the T side. They'll only stall it for a moment. A three on three situation. Again, all three CTs gathering towards the back of the site. The plant will be secured here. But where do they go from this? Molotov down towards the bomb plant position. Will force Mopoz out as soon as he gets that plant in. The endpoint was so much more work to be done. Surreal up here towards the uh, back of the. Uh, Orange boxes for the flashes over as he puts down smokes towards the cross position and tries to open up the opportunity. No one towards sandbags either. Flashbangs over. Robin's going to peek in. Suspect Eastall's at the edge of this smoke. Incendiary behind it as it starts to fade. Mopoz gets that pick. Surreal goes down and so does Crucial. Movistar using speed to their advantage. And again, it's going to work pretty well. And that's a little bit unfortunate with the timing there from Robin. Honestly, if he would have just kept his M4 out rather than using that incendiary, he probably gets both of those kills completely uh, unexpectedly. But the Riders, we're starting to see some raw aggression on the T side. And that's what we really saw in the early stages of Vertigo, of how quickly the T's were trying to make their way out to ramp and taking that control. And for the Riders, they are looking pretty set with the aggression at the moment. But this time around, Jay, they slow it down. They establish some early ramp control from Alex. But all in all, it's not as stacked together from the T's. They're not playing together. It's a much more of a slower default. Slower defaults will certainly prove to be a bit more sort of detrimental to the Movistar Riders side. I mean, you can already see that Alex is down at 27 HP again. And obviously, you can't keep repeating the same thing over and over again, but just uh, they need to find a way to crack endpoint when doing when going for these slow default plays. Look at the stack of A as well. Yeah. I mean, they've, they've gathered so much information. They've baited so much away from the Movistar side. They're just keeping track of all the utility being thrown and the footsteps being heard. The sprays of the AKs, and again, they've gone for this start uh, where they leave one player back on the beat one side. They lose a lot of HP on Mighty Max and Crucial with the spams forward, but eventually they catch off the spray transfer. Mopoz through the wall gets Mighty Max, and now they're ready to make the hit happen. Mobby Star do get a secondary kill onto Thomas. Tap up on Crucial, takes him down to the five versus two. The plant will be installed for a moment again, but it will not be denied by Endpoint. Wow, and to think that how strong Endpoint were looking, th this is uh, a great resurgence coming out from the riders. And 
All it comes down to is how much spam damage was found through the uh, the new upgraded uh, wall there, the metal wall. Not doing as much damage as it was previously, but the spam damage was ridiculous. We saw two players from endpoint incredibly low, and even with the four-man stack at A, the riders have some beautiful entries. The utility usage was fantastic as well, and making sure they're in the right positions on contact, and... We are going to get a tied scoreline. Six rounds apiece for both of these teams. Now, we probably won't see a buy investment to come through. It's going to be $2,400 for the next round for Endpoint. And with two players safe, this is going to be an eco off the back of the upgraded AWP and M4. And an opportunity, really, Jay, for the riders to actually take the lead in the first half. Yeah, considering how well Endpoint were holding their own on the CT defensive, that's a, uh, a pretty good stance to hold. You know, they're going to turn that situation around and potentially... Has something above the Brits. And of course, with the AWP and the M4 saved, and you must imagine there may be an opportunity for Endpoint to reinvest. I mean, they're going to pass that AWP back off to Crucial. He'll buy some Kevlar. Will there be anything else coming out? It seems like they'll take a sacrifice on this round and uh, try and find something else to work with against the Movistar side. Obviously, they have been trumped in the last couple so far. They drop down again from Surreal, and they're going to punish that aggression for the second time. They're ready for Robin on the read as well. So that's one rifle being dropped. The second player to back it up will also go falling. And this probably should be another save call here for Crucial at least. They might send Thomas and Mighty Max and see if they can find anything on the uh, B site. But uh, for the most part, save this up. You can see that lead to Mobby Star. And I tell you what, the, the aggression's working out fantastically for them, even against the eco. Even just some of the spams. It just seems like for the riders, they, uh, they're just locking it down in uh, all the opportunities to, to do some damage, even when they don't even have the information of where the CTs are playing. And for the riders, we spoke about potentially their, their inconsistency that may come through today, and I tell you what, we're, we're seeing some good Counter-Strike on their opponent's map picks, and at least from what I'm seeing from the riders, it looks like they're showing up today, Jay. Ooh, Mighty Max has not been checked. Now he has. <laughs> nice try. <laughs> <laughs> well, Thomas getting a good couple of kills there. The AK, of course, is the second. And it's third pick hit. Pick. What? Not quite going to find that fourth. So, for an eco with no investment, that's Shit, not, bad. not bad. Yeah, it's all right. Thomas in the end, finding three kills. I mean, he's a player that uh, I suppose we haven't really mentioned too much in the broadcast today and uh, been a little bit quiet so far, but... Uh, Give it a bit of time, and I'm sure that once we get into that second half, he'll uh, he'll be warmed up to uh, certainly frag out. M4, Surreal getting aggressive. This time it will find him. The opening kill is found again by Team Endpoint. This uh, B aggression has been met with a passive sort of death from all the Star Riders. That sort of aggressive, explosive comeback and just shut, shutting down the Endpoint side. You'll find more of that latter opposed to that former. Nade up on perfectly placed. It actually bounced off the box. I thought it would go right onto where the T side players were positioned. Apparently not. A five on four situation. End point going back to their standard style of play. Trying to bracket in and secure Mobby Star's positioning. Might take some ramp control. Mighty Max might fall, but the defensive should be able to hold off if end point get their way. And Mighty Max escaping that. Does get information at least. Endpoint, no, there is a bit of presence being established over towards that ramp area. Three players here are over the A bombs like that. Fourth rotate to A is going to be incredibly slow considering how far deep Robin is into the CT position. But for the riders, it looks like it's going to be a commitment once again to the A bomb site. Thomas finding that trade. It still takes out Mighty Max. A four on three situation. They see another player rotating out to the back site. Smokes up, Molotov's down, Alex Eastor and Lowell checking up, tapping through and doing damage. Thomas not taking the kill against him. Robin's going to wait for that Molotov to clear and eventually swing out against them. They should be able to get the bomb plant here, so... Retake mode for Endpoint, not the first time they've been in this position, and in the end they will lose two players, making it three. Eastor almost gets Surreal as well. Surreal chimes back in though, 2k to his name, still two more players to find. No defuse kit from Ivory, he's got a smoking stick on the bomb. And that might be about all he's got right here. He's putting it out towards cross. They got the alleyway secured as well. And I'm thinking that actually he'll find a third pick. Tap up. 
times than the essence though. He, he can't get the defuse now. Alex just gonna hold back passive and save this one. So be eight from Obviously. He'll check out the bomb just in case. But I think both players are gonna get away alive. So we almost might get caught off guard here. Alex already for the spray. Getting that headshot and getting that eighth from Obistar. One thing that's that's really impressive as well for the riders that they've been able to already put up eight rounds on team. We haven't even seen the AWP go in the hands of Estor at all. It seems like Steel is, is pretty adamant on, on not having the AWP on the T side. I mean, I'm sure we'll see it going into the second half, but uh, the rifles, they've been able to do, you know, the brunt of the work so far. And look at the buy as well. Two SMGs out and a FAMA for a point. Oh, look at this from Mopoz. He knows there's a second player there as well. The run boost is coming and everything. Surreal's being suppressed by every little thing right now. Try to find his way on towards the sandbag. Try and catch off Alex. He knows he's there, so he gets that pick back. And all in all, actually, Endpoint do come out on top despite losing that opening man, uh, opening pick. Got Steel on 4 HP and Mopoz on 1. These are two very easily traded players. They yeah, certainly are. And one thing as well is they've actually forced them off the B commitment to wrap back into ramp room. And Mighty Max is low with that MP9. All it will take is pretty much one bullet, but they won't be able to connect onto him, so the information's given up. Now, at least for the riders, there's only two players here. They've split the defense. Molotov's down against the sandbags. Lowell's gonna start pushing up. Nade onto the back site. Mobistar will be given full reign over the A bomb site once again. The plant down from Mopods will come through. And can they hold off against Endpoint for another round here? They've done so well at trading, but with these two players being on single points of HP, like you must imagine that Steel and Mopods must be marked for death at this stage. They are doing good enough to keep Endpoint at bay though and stall for time. Smoke clears, the Molotov fades. Mopoz will be left alone here. One point of HP. If he gets even one kill, let alone two, he would have done his damage. Mighty Max gets the trade back, and now Steel gonna back away and leave it up to his teammates. He does come in for a flank and get another kill of his own right. Again, the low HP players doing so much, and in the end, the high HP players can mop it up for the final round of the half and get 9-6 on the board for Mobby Star Riders. Endpoint, like, you know, when they when they held the bomb site, they were looking confident, but when they were pushed off of it, you know, the retake wasn't always that good. Yeah, look, I mean, it's a bit of a surprise, actually, to, to see only six rounds going the way of Endpoint on the uh, CT defense in the first half of Vertigo, considering it's their map pick. But, I mean, look, we saw, what, six rounds in a row where we saw convincing round victories from them, but it seems like, again, when they're not in the driving seat, when they don't have that momentum, that the riders can kind of just scramble some rounds together. And, I mean, Jay makes a really good point. It's that when we saw the aggression come out from the T's, whether it was over towards ramp or the run boost over at the B stairs, they just couldn't deal with the hyper-aggressiveness coming out from the Spanish side. Yeah, and it's that just sort of that, that aggression that really you know, turned things around for Mobistar Riders. Like they, looked, they were in such a good position, uh, such a bad position, I should say, in the early part of the half. And then when things got kicked up, they kicked up a fight and they kicked up a fuss against the endpoint side. Going into this second half, it may well be the return from the endpoint squad. They are now on the ones on the T side. And statistically speaking for endpoint, this is the half where they've got most of their rounds. Only a slight 5% deviation from their CT half, but even so, you know, a, a majority is a majority. And here we go into the pistol round. Max will be the player on with the utility. Everybody else with default pistols and Kevlar. Mobby Star Riders, the same situation except for Steel and Mopoz, who have utility and a kit for Steel. Flashes over. The team's going to try and make their way out. The USP is going to line up several different frags here from Alex. will only get one. Three for two trade overall as East Tour and Alex can't hold out. Steel left alone in the back of the site. A lot of damage being done to Surreal and Crucial. They'll get a bomb plant in the end and fall back out. But look at how quickly Lowell gets to the site. Spotted out by Crucial. Tapped up by his teammate on the flank. They'll spot out Steel. Take his head off the shoulders. And Lowell left alone here. One versus three being sandwiched in by all sorts. And eventually Surreal will close out the round. What's funny, Ash, is that... Uh, that pistol round was so similar to the first pistol round of uh, of this map of where we saw the riders being out of picket. We just saw aggression coming out to the A ramp area, a little bit of utility as well, and they win the opening gunfights. A force buy to come back for the riders. No scout upgrade to come out from Estor. It's going to be deagles across the board for them. A force buy around here. 
the opponent to take their map pick away. Uh, speaking of map picks, those of you maybe uh, looking for the uh, Sprout Elites matchup, uh, right now Sprout just took the Elites map pick away from them, 16 to 8. One step close to potentially facing off against the endpoint side if they continue their strong run of form in this one. Could also be Movistar Riders at the end of the day. It's winner of that series versus winner of this one, so. All on tomorrow's semi finals for now, though. Endpoint doing well enough to pick apart Movistar. A little bit of damage being sustained again. Nades, in fact, of Lowell landing perfectly on Surreal and Crucial, taking Crucial down. They should secure a bomb plant from here. The question is, what can Lowell do with his Deagle? It doesn't look like it's going to be too much. Surreal's going to be able to take him down. So again, we've seen some damage being done on the Eco, but for the Riders, that was a force buy, so they were looking at being able to convert the second round. And it's not quite the case from Endpoint. The MAC-10's up as well to try and start to build up the economy. The one thing that uh, they were able to do relatively well when they won, what was that, uh, six rounds in a row at one point? HE stack actually coming out for the Riders, and it looks like it's going to be the HE stack out towards ramp, and that actually might not be a bad option, Jay. Robin's in for a rude awakening. Uh, not quite as rude as we'd have thought here, but Thomas is going to see how many players there really are, and might just call for a bomb rotation. They'll throw this um, Mac 10 away because they can afford to do so here. It's a money gatherer scout rather than anything else. Only if players also in the mid position to try and cut off rotations, perhaps. Get that bomb into the B bomb site immediately. Waste no time in its rotation. Mobby Star should be able to get one player in to catch them off, but given the firepower, I don't think they'll be able to do much with it. Flashes over smokes to try and cover. We'll blind them off. Alex will get forced back. They will gain access to the site. Put down the necessary post plant smokes. Look for Alex. Easy as that, it seems, for the T's. Right, easy as that. Only a single player goes down from Thomas. And he was the one with the Mac 10 anyway, so. For Endpoint, they have been able to tie us up at 9 apiece. Now, even with this map being quite close, you still have to give the advantage going the way of Endpoint, considering that this is their map pick. They are on the T side. But I talk about advantages. This is the first time we've seen the AWP in the hands of Estor. Yeah, the uh, AWP out for him. Surreal. Look how aggressive he's going to get down with the opening kill, getting out of dodge. Suspecting Steel's going to be here towards the bottom of the stairs. And he'd be right to assume that. Will he find the kill, though? When the smoke clears, we'll find out. Meanwhile, on the A bomb side, Thomas is going to get that pick, and Surreal does trade on to Steel. Mighty does get in the return frag, though, so it's a two on four scenario. And again, they've overwhelmed them when it comes to the simple frags and the trades. Eastall chimes in for one against Robin, but the T's do burst into the site. He gets a second kill, dropping that bomb, most importantly. Cross out. Thomas will not go for that face on the stack up. We'll just plant for the platform. See the AWP and molds of it away as he gets tagged at the 23 HP and should be forced to save. Uh, Alex, if he finds a pick, they're going to go for this. And he takes one down. It's all down to Thomas. Down to just 32 points of health as well. It's going to be a difficult retake to come out for the CTs, but they've got the man advantage to work with. Thomas, they have not spotted his position. Are they going to let him run past? Thomas finds the first into the one versus one, and he's just playing time. There's no kit as well for Alex. He's got to try and pick one up and at least try and tap this bomb, get his way onto Thomas. But I'll tell you what, I think this round's already over. Thomas has been able to waste way too much time, and Alex, he just can't do anything. Thomas is just not peeking. He's hiding and hiding, and that's finally going to be a round for Endpoint. Amazing discipline from Thomas right there. Not to go aggressive, not to try look for the pick, to go passive and wait for the plant to be tapped. I think at that point, even then, they would have been able to try and deny it. I think he had a Molotov on him. Yeah. So it would have been beautifully played on his part. Endpoint will reclaim the lead that they fought so hard for. This T side is going pretty well for them. Not quite swimmingly, but certainly confident, especially with Movistar Riders getting away with one AK and going to back it up with a half by a round. 5-7, and three Deagles for the CT side. Not much in the grand scale of things. They will try and counteract it with sheer aggression, and Thomas is ready quickly to deal with Mopoz there. Hope that Alex gets aggressive in his own right. I think Eastall might pop Flash's man in, and then we'll see what that AK can do. But it is only one player that he could find. The main T side force have rotated away back to B. At the same time, Thomas will back off. Eventually, Reface and Alex will take him down. But Endpoint, their main focus is going to be that B site here. It's a real... Entering up at the moment for the T side. Good flashbangs coming up. Inclusion as well with his AWP. And uh, there was at least for a moment that an AK was picked up. And Estor and Alex, a couple of AKs to work with. 
And I'll tell you what, they've been able to do some serious damage so far on this eco round. Wonder if they'll go ahead and try and deny the bomb plant. They could still do so. Surreal spotted. And at the same time, East Tor falls in the back lines. The bomb can't get rotated towards the A bomb site at the moment. They have to face against Alex, try and find him, and eventually Robin will connect his shots at 2k and get 11 on the board for endpoint. But as you say, you know, like there's so much damage being done by such little investment. I mean, the Lobby Star Riders here with their real rifle round could have an opportunity to seriously cripple endpoint. The buyer coming through won't be looking confident when it comes to the money line here. Two players on hundreds of dollars. A $2,000 float for the likes of Crucial here. So a very, no, excuse the pun, a crucial round for the endpoint side. It certainly is. The NWP out for both sides. Ooh, this HE onto Thomas. This is super aggressive. This is one of the first times I've actually seen aggression coming out from Ram. Thomas just trying to play on the edge of this smoke. Alex should be able to win it out, and so he does. So an opening advantage going the way of the Riders. And look at the utility coming out from on both sides out through mid. One of the first times that we've really seen a contest coming Ooh. out. Great shot from Robin. I love that because I'm pretty sure it was Robin as well that was using that position back on the uh, on the CT side. On the CT side. side, yeah. And he knows exactly how to counter it. Like that, just Alex. I, I oh. love that. Ooh. I love this. This might be bigger. He's gonna actually. The bomb down. Here comes Robin. No idea to expect it. That's a headshot, and Alex needs backup from here. But if he can stall for time, that would be so much value for the Movistar Rider squad. And Mopo's are going to start to push mid as well. Riders are just looking for information. It's going to be difficult for them to try and keep their eyes on the bomb at all costs, especially when all of Endpoint are going to be looking to try and take that back. But look at the information gathered. Mighty Max could have an opportunity of taking down Alex, but it comes down to timing, and the timing works out in his favor. And that takes out the aggressor, the main aggressor. There is some players' presence coming in from the CT forces, in particular when it comes to denying the A-bomb site here. But Endpoint want to go back to B for another round. Flashes over 20 seconds. Surreal's up. No one is a player back towards Ford. No one's checked it. Lola could do so much, but Crucial trades it, and now it's all left to East Or the man that was ensuring there was no A wrap around. And Max will get the bomb plant in the midst of the site. East Tour left alone in a one versus two to try and secure the first round for Mobby Star Riders on this CT half. And that first AWP shot going down. They'll know what's going on. They'll know exactly where he is and the nades and the utility just coming up. We're gonna try and block his vision, try and keep him away from common positions. No kit for him either, so not a lot of time to work with. And uh, the AWP of Crucial is ready for this. He crosses out, doesn't quite find him. He's still eventually spotted and Crucial gets his 2K. Well, well, well. And to think of the advantage that the Riders had in that last round, Jay, they have a four and three. They get the information of where the presence is. They've dropped the bomb as well, but Endpoint still win it out. And even with two players surviving, ah, uh, the Riders, we're, we're not seeing the class that we saw from them in the first half going over and transitioning now onto the CT setup. And Endpoint, I, I just, I'm not sure what the play is from the Riders that try and bring it back. I mean, we've seen the aggression. We've seen them even finding opening picks, but it seems like it's the mid-round where Endpoint bring these disadvantages back. Yeah, and I think that's sort of like a big thing for the Movistar Rider side, you know. It's like they usually win it on the basis of getting the, the sheer aggression going in the midst of the, uh, of, the, uh, uh, of the start of the round, or managing to find the kills at the end of the round. I'm not sure whether that's down to Movistar's sort of uh, strengths or Endpoint's weaknesses when it comes to, you know, gaining information. Like, certainly they love the information game on this map. And they're using it for the best of their abilities here as Thomas starts things off getting a kill. Alex is ready to find that trade though, so they do find something out here. And this uh, Movistar timeout hasn't gone to waste. They find an AK, they find map presence, they find a 4 on 4 situation, and they're going to continue pressing up here. He's still going to catch them off guard, they're not expecting this. One kill found, looking for Robin around the corner here at the box. He does double up on the T side, so they do remove that AK from play. They do remove the Mount of Vontae from the Movistar side. So far, this has been a hugely successful eco. They're going to fake the A presence and shift over to the B bomb site, making sure they're grouping together rather than continuing the default. The three on two. Now, there is one player here over at B, and that's Steel. And he's got the SMG, so we have an opportunity to line up a couple. But look at the utility from Endpoint. They have so much to work with. Lolo will sneak downstairs and try and find that AK, and Steel won't have the same luxury, unfortunately. He's left as the lone defender of the V-Bomb site. Not blind, doing damage, but Surreal will trump him in terms of the frags, and the plant will be secure. It's all left to Lolo. 
Lone man left, let's find one on the backstab, but 32 points of HP, and again, nothing of what you'd need for a good retake. No kit, one smoke, no flashes. And he should just get forced back here. He's going to opt to save his AK, knowing that there's virtually no chance. And we will see a 13th on the board. And, and again, you know, you don't want to take too much away from the Mobistar Riders. Sign so they did all right with the... Um, uh, uh, with the, uh, uh, you know, with the fact that they had like, not, not a massive investment. They had themselves yeah. uh, quite a lot of damage done to the endpoint side. And AK saved. You know, I'd call that a pretty decent success. I'd call it a very decent success. And the fact of the matter is that endpoint, even with them winning so many rounds at the moment in this second half, the economy isn't booming. Like, it's strong, but it's not in a point where it's like we're seeing 16k, we're seeing 10k on some of the players as well. We're not seeing that. So... For the Riders, I mean, we haven't seen a, uh, a round so far yet in their second half. You know what? I'd, I, I'd hope to kind of maybe see a double AWP presence. I, I just feel like we need to see a bit more of a, of a change up and an adjustment at the moment. And look at this from Surreal. Openings coming out to the B-bomb site. One for one trade, but Crucial trades it right back. That's the B-bomb site completely opened up. Uh, four on three. Endpoint going to storm further forward. <laughs> Crucial. <laughs> Mate, what did you have for breakfast? Oh, down <laughs> I want some likes. of that. <laughs> Damn right. Mopoz and Alex, <laughs> last two players left, and they're basically out of the round. They're saving already. An end point, getting to 14 rounds. Crucial on 25 picks, by the way. Incredible stuff posted by him, and I believe this is round 23. My math is not that great here, Dweg, but... Man, what a showing from these guys. That, that was unbelievable. Those were some really sharp entries coming out from end point. Thomas, I'll tell you what, he's, he's had a little bit of a quiet game so far in Vertigo. But one thing that you can rest assured is that even when there are maybe one or two individuals having a bit of a quiet game, that for Endpoint, it, it doesn't seem to be a problem. And, I mean, you just look at the rounds that they've been able to convert in the second half, and it's, it's not a problem at all. It's eight in a row for them. And again, I, I tell you what, I mean, we mentioned it, I don't know how many times over the last few months about these tactical pauses. Why aren't we seeing them, Jay? It is so frustrating. It's just one of those things about Tier 2 and Tier 3 CS is the fact you that just no, don't one, see it. no one ever goes for a tactical. Like, it's just a, yeah. it's just a bit of like a, a, a dark joke at this point. Like, I, I, don't, I don't know why, you know, I, I couldn't tell you for certain, because to me it makes sense that you would use those opportunities to sort of like switch up the pace. And for Mobistar right now, like, now's, now's a better time than any. To sort of like, you know, try and break the momentum of Endpoint to try and uh, you know, f find an opportunity, uh, you know, f try and like, you know, d sit back in your own minds and f take 30 seconds to figure out what you're doing wrong, what they're doing wrong, how you can improve and how you can exploit them. But in this case, they have not taken a pause. Crucial's again rounded another corner, taken out East Tor with his just, it, that, you know, split second reaction times. They've dropped the opening pick, looking for their second, and Crucial hits those. He, he just hits those. He doesn't stop. He's a, he's a man on the hour at the moment. There is a TK that actually comes through from the flame. So they put it back into a three on three. This is actually turning out to be quite the strong round at the moment for the riders, especially with the information that's been given from Alex. And Thomas doesn't find anything trying to hold down the luck. Of all the players Robin could have killed, it had to be the AWP. <laughs> that's real. not really much here from the uh, main entrance. 14 to 10 for the endpoint side. Riders will have an opportunity for them. And again, doing their best to uh, try and bring this comeback. They should drop some weapons though. You can see Crucial dropped an AK and an AWP comes out for him. Mighty Max has got himself a MAC-10 because they haven't got quite enough money. But uh, yeah, endpoint a little bit miscombobulated there to that mid position and that will, uh, you know, as you mentioned, hurt them pretty uh, badly in this one. And again, those rifles out from Mobby Star Riders could be the big pickup. But look at that nade landing so perfectly. Body blocked and exploding in Mopoz's face. Crucial already. Small gap in the smoke connecting to Alex. And almost quick scoping on towards Mopoz with no info to his name. He almost found himself a pick. Good damage, though, being found from Endpoint so far. Unfortunately, I'm not sure how much of that damage they would know about. But at least it's forced the Riders back into quite a passive hold. They're actually going to boost up over... The uh, the metal wall. Let's see if they can get a little bit of an information through the boost. But for endpoint at the moment, they're showing no presence over at B. This is going to be a full commitment. Oh, Crucial, come on, oh, go! Yes, there it is. Oh my goodness. Gotta love it. Crucial, he can wall bang too. 
And that's what, 28 kills so far in this one for him. Endpoint moving up to the A site commitment. Thomas sprays through the same angle, catching one more pick as well. And they know the common spray angles, they know the common wall bangs. It's their map pick for a reason, a five on three. 38 seconds to work with. The AWP of East Door still could be a danger here towards the alley, but the flashbang is coming in. Thomas rounded the corner. East Door not going to get his shot off as the man goes down. And now they've got to play passive and try to deny the bomb plant in the last couple of seconds. Steel in particular here on the orange box is caught off by, uh, caught off by Thomas. Three picks to his name, and Lowell is left alone to run for the hills to save his life and can see map point to end points. I think one thing that the Jay mentioned in the pregame was the fact that of the uh, the recent times that these two teams have played each other, it's double digits being found on all the maps. I mean, at the moment, we're seeing Endpoint's map pick of Vertigo, the Riders being able to pick up double digits, but uh, I don't really see them being able to find any more than that. And it, It's a little bit disappointing to see that they were able to find the first half or the end of the first half at a 9-6 to six result and only win out one more round, or one round, I should say, in all so far on the CT half. Five players staying alive from endpoint, and pretty much no damage has been done to any player other than the bomb raiders. And that's how you know that you that you found yourself a good round there. Yeah. Endpoint just taking no prisoners and showing no mercy as well. Second tactical timeout being called by Movistar here in this map up. And appropriate so because they've got they, they've got five rounds to the comeback of OT. So it's it's not exactly like it's the most unlikely thing in the world. Like you you could, you could very easily make te five good rounds. Like you know it's not like you were like you know a, a ten to f a fifteen to five or anything like that. Like we saw yeah. on, on Dust Two between Heretics and Tenerife Titans. <laughs> So, you yeah. know, like, you know, and, and even though that comeback was mad, it's so unlikely given the current circumstances here. Endpoint are looking so, so good right now. Movistar, I mean, they're looking all right at their own right, but when you've got guys like Crucial giving 28 frags, always reading out your positions. And, of course, then with the full buy, you guys have a bit of a weird sort of uh, a force back with a lack of utility and, and a for Martin for Alex. You know, things are not looking great for the Movistar side, but again, it's still possible. I'd like to give them the time of day to see whether or not this comeback happens. And it comes down to this. It comes down to the riders starting off now. And one thing I'm noticing immediately is look at the lack of utility we're seeing from the CT. So it's going to be difficult for them to even try and aggress some map control or even try and do some damage. Endpoint. Pretty slow at the moment, trying to take this ramp control. There are two players at sandbags for the riders. This this is what I'm interested for. Okay. Oh, still got caught off. They've got the info. Robin catching a steal for an opening pick. Alex and Mopo still sitting back here. Looking at each other, waiting and baiting, and maybe might catch off the likes of Team Endpoint. Mighty Max going for those standard spray positions. The nade from Thomas, and that's the main disadvantage of putting two players in that position. No idea that was about to hit them. And they're still going to remain there at the very least. You know, credits are committing to the play. But now as the execution comes in, they're going to have to be the players that do something out here. The M4 and the FAMAS. Which one peaks further? Do they even go for that? So actually, it's going to be a bait play because they're going back towards the B bomb site. Lowell's the lone man here as Robin does pick apart the likes of Alex spraying through, continuing to lurk forward of this one. And now Lowell is left alone at the big white box. Five on three. Moppers does get Robin on the lurk play. And Lowell lurking takes one out. One good player and a second pick as well. Crucial gets that orb of his own and now it's all left to Mopoz as he's taught falls. One versus two, 49 HP. And I'm imagining that this may well be GG for map one. Unless he catches off Surreal doing damage. Unable to get this man at the corner. And Crucial does not miss those kinds of kills. Dirty bomb for him to close out the map and a 16 to 10 scoreline for endpoint.